you haven't seen why I got this box, I highly recommend you check out my vlog of the trip to Austin, Texas to visit AMD's offices there and ask a few questions about Ryzen, overclocking and a few other bits and pieces. But otherwise, this is the review of the MSI B350 Tomahawk. For me, one of the best things about the AM4 platform is that the B350 chipset isn't really a low end. It's actually what I would expect most people to be buying. This is designed for anyone who just needs one graphics card, maybe an M.2 SSD and a killer processor and that's pretty much it. Otherwise, you only really need to go to X370 if you need multiple GPUs. That's really the only major benefit and maybe a little bit of extra rear I.O. Now, the Tomahawk has a pretty awesome overall setup. Of course, you've got the AM4 socket in the middle and those four DDR4 RAM slots, just to the right of it, as you'd expect. Now, this does use the standard mounting method, although you can remove those clips and the back plates and attach your own uh, you know, CPU cooler if you fancy. Of course, uh, the uh, CPUs that you're mostly gonna be getting might not come with a CPU cooler, so do bear that in mind and do take a look at what AM4 support you have as this only features an AM4 socket uh, mounting holes. Otherwise you do have uh, you know, actually quite a few fan headers on the board. I think there's a total of five here, all of which are four pin PWM. I think it's one uh, next to the CPU socket, two on the top right hand side next to the 24 pin. And you actually have a couple of debug LEDs there as well, which is very good for overclocking. And lower than that, you have a right angled USB 3.0 header, as well as the uh, actually up two upright SAN supports and two right angled SAN supports. Of course, this is because the chipset isn't carrying as many SAN supports through it. And you do have a couple of other connectors, including uh, plenty of front panel IO along the bottom. Along the bottom, you have the front panel IO, including the power button and reset button and stuff like that, as well as another USB 3.0 Gen 1 header, as well as uh, a LED header, USB 2 headers. I think you even have a TPM header here if you want to use a trusted partner module. And of course, you have the audio header as well. While we're here, the audio section actually features a split PCB with red LEDs on it, which makes it fairly stylish when you boot the board up. And there's a couple of other LED sections along the board as well. You also have a single reinforced 16X PCIe slot uh, just below the CPU socket. Under that, you have a M.2 slot, which is a full speed one, which is awesome for your NVMe SSD needs. And you actually have a few other sort of legacy ports. We actually have a legacy PCI non-express connector in fact, you have two of those. So if you need any really old things to work on your AM4 motherboard, then you can pick one of these up. You do also have an extra X8 lane, I believe, uh, that connects through the chipset, uh, through the X4 lane, through the chipset, to be able to use an extra graphics card if you want, although it's not compatible with SLI or Crossfire. The rear I.O. is uh, fairly standard. It's a little bit limited. You have a couple of USB 2 ports, a couple of USB 3, 3.1 and Type-C ports available, as well as some display outputs if you want to use this with one of AMD's upcoming Raven Ridge APUs, and you also have obviously Gigabit Ethernet and a fairly nice audio setup too. The BIOS for this motherboard is basically the same as any of the other MSI motherboards you can see. The only main difference is the actual sort of image that comes up, as this is in a slightly different class to the uh, you know X-Power Titanium and stuff like that, but it's still uh, plenty featureful. You have the easy mode, which is very easy to use, very nice to look at. You obviously have the draggable boot, uh, boot priority icons, which is very nice. And if you want to overclock in this board, which I did, uh, and overclock the 1600X to 4 gigahertz, that was very easy to do. It's very simple. Uh, make sure the BIOS is up to date. That definitely helps with a lot of compatibility. And you can actually use a XMP as well, which allows you to use the XMP profiles on your RAM to set RAM speed very easily. And was actually relatively compatible and made it a little bit easier to overclock the RAM and get it to, I think, 26. 67 was the speed that I got to. For me, this motherboard is actually pretty awesome. Now, of course, it's not the biggest, best uh, motherboard on the planet. It's not necessarily the single most stylish one, although it's certainly not hideous, and you don't really get too much in the box. Actually, only really the rear I.O. shield, I think two or four SATA cables and the manual, that's pretty much it. Uh, but otherwise, you still do get, uh, you know, a very nice motherboard, it's overclockable, and especially if you know you're not gonna need two GPUs to run an SLR Crossfire, this is a fantastic value for money and a great place to get one of the sort of 1600x, 1600 kind of chips and really uh, get some awesome power from a PC and save a little bit of money on the motherboard as well. When it comes to scoring, I'm gonna go for a 4.5 value for money. I think a five for performance with a four for functionality and a four for style and I think a 4.5 for Titanium DB score and a gold award. 
Now to make it very clear, I did go to Texas to pick this motherboard and this CPU up and MSI did pay for that trip, although this is not a sponsored review by any sense, uh, stretch of the imagination, uh, and this is my genuine thoughts on the board, especially in comparing them to the X370 motherboards that I've reviewed in the past. So overall, I am really genuinely impressed with it. If you've got any questions about it, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful and informative, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and let me know in the comments down below. If you didn't like it, feel free to hit the dislike button, but do let me know why in the comments down below so that I can improve for next time. And if you enjoyed it, feel free to share it as well. If you want to know more about the motherboard, then feel free to take a look at the links in the description down below. And if you're buying anything else on Amazon or Overclockers UK, I'd be really grateful if you could use the affiliate links in the description down below. And there's a merchandise link in there as well if you want t-shirts, hoodies, mouse pads, or uh, really quite a lot of stuff. So feel free to check that out as well. At least some other videos over here for you the subscribe button over this side and uh, yeah other than that thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video